congratulations. How are you feeling after that performance? Oh, just so relieved. It's, just been, it's been a tough year, and after my last fight, I just knew I had to come and get a big win and, and make a statement, and I'm just fi finally glad I was able to do that. Is that kind of how you pictured it going tonight, or did you see something else happening in there? Um, like, what, what happened tonight is literally what we drill day and out with Paul and Alice, my team at Next Gen. Do you just have such a fantastic team since they've made that move? I just feel like I've seen like the secret ingredient I needed to develop as a fighter, and it's just what we've done for months and months and then. It's just hard work every day. Was there any pressure going in on a card that's so big, everybody's watching this card, that holds a lot of importance to Bellator? Was there any extra pressure there? I think it was because a lot of people felt I won that last fight, and the female featherweight title fight was tonight, and I kind of had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. It should be me fighting, so... Yeah, I did have pressure, but I think I finally believed in myself and my team, and we've had such a, a strong camp, and um, was able to finally kind of show that performance. Do you think you'll get that next shot then, after this performance, if yeah. Bellator sticks around? Yeah, 100%. Is there any pressure knowing that there is a little bit of a up in the air about what's happening with, you know, the promotion? You know, maybe there won't be a Bellator next year. Is there anything like what's the? Po how do you remain positive knowing that there may not be a future? Um, I think. What, what I felt tonight was that I had to just focus on this fight and get a big win, and there would be many doors open. You know, I'm obviously I'm Bellator through and through, and I want to be the, the, the featherweight champion here. It's got the best division in the world, the, the best female fighters, so hopefully that next fight is me and the, the winner of the title fight tonight. It, it was hard for us to see back here, but it looked like after the fight you um, spoke with Rhonda's mom. Is that? Can you tell us like what, <laughs> what that was about? Yeah, I think like me and Molly always say like Rhonda was the one that we kind of motivated, motivated us to believe that we could be female fighters and, and to see her mom here tonight was was unreal and she said she liked my throws. So <laughs> yeah, I've been reading Rhonda's book all week. I've read it so many times and it's just nice to see her. Is it um, interesting to know that now you're that girl that people are watching that, that are inspired by? Um, yeah, I suppose I don't really think about it like that. I just think I've got, I'm, I've got a job to do. I wanna be the best in the world. I wanna be the best version of myself and that's just what I focus on. Thank you. Speaking of Ronda Rousey, did you know the last time Sarah McMahon was finished via TKO was the Ronda Rousey fight in 2014? Yes, we, we, we were talking about in the gym, like um, the go for knees, go for knees, but we, we did uh, drill the exact same position on the ground, so yeah, that, that was nice, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it certainly adds to it. And, and you know, was, like, how much pressure was there going into this fight? Because again, you know, McMahon, probably one of the biggest opponents you fought, you know, there's potentially a title shot on the line, like how much pressure were you feeling heading into this monumental card? I always say it from the start of my career, I've been on massive cards, main events, co-main events, it's quite, every fight is a lot, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of expectation for me and I have to juggle being a mum. I have to leave my daughter for months on end and do two flights a week to get to camp and it's like <laughs> I just don't let people down. I don't want to let my team down, my family down, my, my daughter down. So that I think that's the biggest thing. I just want to come out here and make them proud. See uh, Meatball Molly over there getting emotional. What's it like having her around during fight week? I'm sure she keeps the energy up. She's got a great personality. I mean it's probably infectious having her during fight week. Yeah, I always say she's such an asset. She's like invaluable i just I, I wouldn't be able to do it without her and not only fighting just life in general she's just the best human being the best person in every and any situation in life <laughs> it's like yeah it's amazing um i believe pre-fight you said that cyborg you think will win tonight um if that is the next opponent how do you look at that fight stylistically totally different to the last two camps it's gonna be a um you know a totally different stylistic of fight but i really trust in my team and <laughs> Next gen, they, they're, they're the best and we'll, we'll come up with the correct formula to win that fight. I, I don't see why not. It's like anybody can be beaten and if we just put, c prepare correctly, we can do it. And just last one for me, hanging out with Molly tonight. Uh, how are you guys celebrating? I know Molly, I don't think she'll get you in any trouble. Well, you know what not. she's like, go <laughs> who knows where we'll end up tonight. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Leah? Yeah, good. MMA Locker Room, part of Pub Sports Radio. I just got a few questions for you. So it seems like before your last fight with Katz and Gano, you were doing a lot of commentary and stuff like that and studying fighters. You actually said when I spoke to you about her, you studied her like a nerd. Did you do the same thing with Sarah McMahon this time? Um, yeah, like our team, we, we, we do breakdowns. We, we watch uh, a lot of our opponents at this level. You can't really just go in and wing it. You have to know their strengths and what they're good at. And it's at the highest level, so we had to 
do a lot of wrestling. Shout out to my training partner, Jake. He's here. Um, comes and gives 120% every single day in every single session. So we did so much work in camp for this, this fight stylistically. And then this is your first ground and pound finish. So after getting that first ground and pound finish in Bellator, do you feel a little bit different afterwards? Do you feel like you want to do that McGregor walk or stroll or anything? So what was that last bit? Uh, this is your first ground and pound finish in Bellator. Do, do you feel a little bit different after getting that victory? Does it make you want to, you know, maybe walk up and do that McGregor strut roll? <laughs> no, no. It's just um, something we've been working on in camp. Uh, being a bit more vicious and looking for the finish and rather than submissions or um, stuff like that. I think it's what Paul, my coach, we've been working on is trying to be more aggressive on the ground and not worry about passing too much, just trying to um, land big shots on the ground. And it seems like you're a trendsetter, not just in MMA, but in the fashion too. Seems like when you showed up to that Dublin event, you know, you definitely had the outfit on that had everybody's eyes turning. <laughs> so is there anybody that gives you like stylistic tips like that or any tips you got for any women out there in the world? <laughs> No, no. I I have the most boring life ever. I sit in my apartment or I'm at the gym, so I always look like I'm always like looking for. If I get one night out of year, I, I make sure it's something nice. But thank you, that dress is my favorite. <laughs> Leah, right over here. Congratulations. Uh, how do you put into words a night like tonight? Louise Mackay walks out there right before you're fighting. You got your BFF Molly in the corner cheering you on, and then you pull this off against someone who's such a veteran in Sarah. I mean. How does one even tell that story like next year? I don't know. Like, this has been such a hard year for me. I think I've seen some of the darkest days and just to keep pushing through. And Molly's such an inspiration. She's come through so much in life that nobody knows about. And just being around people like her makes you believe you can just keep going and keep going no matter what shit life throws at you. And no matter what people do to you, you can just keep coming back and, and proving them wrong. Can I ask, like, what are those personal battles, you know, week to week leading up to a fight? Because on the outside, you know, Leah McCourt, she's got the documentary that aired on BBC and obviously was in big fights. And, you know, you say that this was a tough year. I mean, just what are some of those things you had to overcome to get here? Um, I could be here all day talking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's a lot emotionally, you know, obviously I'm a mom. I've, um, I've, I've been through, yeah, I've been through a lot this year, but... Just keep trusting God and His plan, and keep you know believing that I'm here for a purpose. And I just want to inspire other people to just not give up, and no matter what shit happens, just keep going, keep pushing forward. Two final words from me. There's always a lot of talk about how hyped the crowd is at the Three Arena in Dublin, but these last big fights been here in Southern California. I'm assuming you know you don't mind fighting closer to home, but like, is there something to traveling and? kind of getting to this point in your career where you're not just in Europe, but they're bringing you to the States for these big fights? Yeah, definitely. It's like, we're not going to be doing this for a long time. And to have these memories and travel with the team and the madness that happens fight week and the madness that's happened the last two weeks that I'm sure we'll talk about. It's just, it's definitely um, blessed and very grateful to be here and, and never ever take it for granted that I get to do this or get to spend every day with the people I do in the gym and just real good hearted people. So yeah, I'm very lucky. And then finally, since you've been at this level, what are you most proud of in your skills that you've been able to improve since you've been a Bellator fighter? Um, I don't know. What about? Yeah, I think being more aggressive and finishing, finishing the fights and look, looking for a finish rather than a, a win, yeah. So Leah, I don't know if you're excited enough right now. You just beat one of the greatest women of all time and you probably just set yourself up for a fight with another one of the greatest women of all time. If you win these fights, you've etched your name into the history books completely. What, is, what does that mean to you, making your name, making your name like a legacy in this sport? Yeah, it does, it does mean a lot, but I think if you watch any of my fights afterwards, I, I'm kind of like content for about 10 minutes and then I'm like, what's next, what's next, what's next? Like I don't really settle. Um, even though before the fight, I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never fighting again. I'm so nervous. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. What is the most that you miss when you're, you're uh, out of your country fighting? Um, my daughter, Isabella. Okay. And what is next for you for, for the next, for, for your next? Um, I, I need to go home and be a mom for a bit. I just can't wait to go home and do the school run and just b have a bit of a normal life. But no doubt I'll be on the phone to Paul in two days asking him when I'm fighting next or what's happening. But hopefully the winner of the title fight tonight, um, that'll be me in Belfast. 
in March. Thank you. One quick one, one final one. Uh, you talk about being a mom. We hear about the fighter dads, like, oh, if my daughters start dating and I want the boys to know that, like, no trouble. As a fighter mom, do you feel a little bit of that protectiveness to maybe show the highlight reel as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I make, when I have black eyes, I make sure I go to, and do the school run and walk right up to the gate so they all see it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.